Okay, that water's just come straight in front of us. So this is tense, and we're really gonna have to rush to get through here before we are stuck, big time. So we did have an action-packed day. We were gonna to go to Sandwich Harbour. The four of us set off early this morning and I thought it'd be a good idea to put just 30 litres of diesel in the car. And unfortunately the pump man put petrol. And um, so yeah, we've set about draining the tank, which is underway. So not quite the start to the day that we were hoping for. How much fuel did they put? So, where are we at? So, Canic. We started draining the tank and we were hoping to try and drain as much as we can out as, as possible, but it doesn't look like you'll be able to drain, physically drain enough, and there's still gonna be quite a lot of petrol in. If there were a little bit of petrol, you could probably get away with that over 120 litres of diesel, but uh, it's not worth the risk on a long trip like this. No. So the mechanics come over um, and he want, and he's about 400 metres away. He wants us to tow the vehicle to his shop. He says it's a shop, but he doesn't even have a doesn't lifter. doesn't have a ramp, so, so he's still going to be on his back. That much different doing it here. So we're just weighing up whether to do it here or just get cracking and do it here. Let's just keep draining it so at least it's lighter. Oh yeah, that wants to be empty before we try and have done that before. <laughs> Imagine if he didn't say anything though, and we were literally in Sandwich Harbour when that got in. Yeah. I've, I've vowed to never drop this tank again. <laughs> Get that started. You alright? Yeah, that's fine. Push up on that side. Two man lift. One of the benefits of having a TD5 is you can prime the fuel pump. Press the accelerator five or ten times, the light will flash. So, I'll give it a go. That pump will run now, clear all the air. You'll hear it shut off and then it will start again. And you can hear that. Yeah, it primes itself then. Yeah, it's not a bad idea waiting until Thursday to do the sandwich I would drive it around a bit, make sure that there's a lot. So far so good, we just had the car running, no leaks, so wheels are back on, I think we're done. Time to start the day! 
yeah not not quite the start to the week that we had hoped but no one died so we're all good should we set up camp we travel mostly by car yeah but a lot of people do use the train or the bus <laughs> So everything is now sorted with the fuel tank and everything. Harry did a really good job at getting it all done in total. I think we arrived at the petrol station at 7.30 this morning and that's when the incident happened where petrol went into our diesel defender. And then we spent probably about five hours at the workshop where Harry was dropping the tank and getting it all sorted with the mechanic there, Ryan, who was really, really nice and really helpful. So big thanks to Ryan there. From there, we went and picked up our fishing permit. So when we were in Wintook, Harry went on a bit of a splurge and bought himself a fishing rod and a load of other bits and pieces that you need to go fishing. And now we've driven down to the coast and the guys are just airing down the tires. The sand is quite deep in sections. So they're just doing that. And then we're gonna drive a little bit closer to the water there where they'll try out some fishing. We'll let you know how it goes. Andy did just say to me on the uh, radios there, how do you make batter? So it sounds like he's feeling pretty confident <laughs> in catching something, but it'd be pretty cool to have some battered fish for dinner tonight. We'll let you know how we get on everybody. We actually did cook and eat the fish that Andy caught. MH cooked up some mussels and I made some beer batter. It turned out to be delicious. Morning guys, so today is take two of our attempt of doing the Sandwich Harbour Bay. Everything happens for a reason and the weather is so much better today than it was on Monday, yeah. there's no fog. Low tide is a little bit later on, so the section that we're driving today is the, the Sandwich Harbour section is where the sea meets the sand dunes and when the tide comes in, it closes off the road, the beach. Yeah. So you have a short period of time where you can actually drive down it turn around and come back down the beach or actually go up the dunes and drive the dunes back but if you guys have seen the grand tour namibia special then you'll know what we're talking about we actually watched it last night to see what, well we've already seen it before, this is probably the third or fourth time that we've watched it, but just to refresh our memories of what we've got to come today. So, so. yeah, we're just packing up now, and then we're gonna hit the road. just stopped for a quick coffee on the way to the start of the Sandwich Harbour drive. It's a beautiful day as we said earlier. Uh, yeah, Let's see how it goes. Before we could drive along the Sandwich Harbour, we had to pick up our permit. This cost us 150 Namibian dollars, plus $50 for our vehicle and can be bought at the Ministry of Environment and Tourism office in Wavers Bay. Wavers Bay is Namibia's main seaport, south of Swakopmund and to the west of Windhoek. The drive from Wavers Bay to the start of Sandwich Harbour is roughly 20 kilometers of tar, passing the salt refineries and countless flamingos.
So we've just turned off of the road here onto the sandy section. The guys are just airing down the tires. Along that drive, we must have driven past thousands of flamingos. Um, there are times during certain seasons where there are like a sea of flamingos within this area. So we've just turned onto this sand, as I said earlier, and there's a sign here that just says Sandwich Harbour, which is very, very cool. So we're getting close. We are cutting it quite tight on time. We did think that we had a lot of time, but it always catches up with you. So we need to kind of be quite speedy so that we'll make sure we hit the section where the sea meets the dunes whilst the tide is out. Yeah, we've aired down. I'm just gonna get the toe strap off the roof, have that ready, because we are running a bit late. So the timing is not ideal. So the window for crossing before the tide comes in is actually quite small now. Had it. Just keep a little bit of a gap. Do you want to go in front or do you want me to go in front? So MH has just come through on the radio and she said we're 11 miles out from the actual Sandwich Harbour um, section where the dunes come up on the left. This is pretty tough going, it's very soft, the car isn't staying in a straight line um, and you do have to keep, keep on the pedal, so it's interesting. The drive totals 50 kilometres, with roughly 10 kilometres of that being impassable at high tide. We are about five miles out from the start of the official Sandwich Harbour section and we can see the tall sand dunes sort of creeping up closer in the distance there, which is quite exciting because it's what we've seen in all the videos that we've looked at is where the big sand dunes meet the sea and we are getting very close to it now. Since these vehicles aren't we haven't built these to do this sort of stuff, you know, it's, they're very top heavy. It is kind of crazy doing it in these vehicles because it's not just a weekend toy. This is everything that we have and own. So yeah, it's, it's exciting, but also a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> So this is it guys, there's no turning back now. The dunes are coming up on the left of us. It's 10 minutes from low tide, so in 10 minutes time, that tide's just gonna come back up the beach and towards us, cramming us into the sand dunes. So now is the time to have the pedal to the metal. Yeah, it's, I've never done anything like this before, it's mental. <laughs> found it really cool yeah it's actually as good as you think it's gonna be yeah we felt like we might have been a bit sort of disappointed but that was actually really cool we reached the end of the stretch and had to quickly make the call as to which way we would return back the way we came hoping we'd make it before high tide or attempt to climb up the vertical sand dunes the decision was made we would turn back along the beach these sand dunes can reach up to 100 metres tall, and in our 3 plus tonne landies, it seemed near impossible and a risk we chose not to take. Harry has just gone over with the Max tracks to try and help Andy and MH who are stuck up there. It looks like they're on the move now, but the sand is starting to come down from this sand dune and is closing the gap between the sand starts and where the water is coming to. So this is tense. 
and we're really gonna have to rush to get through here before we are stuck big time it's actually quite a stressful thing to do is to drive this because you can get stuck so easily and you're so tight on time yeah it looks like they're coming now so we better hit the road we had to start moving or we would lose our car to the unforgiving atlantic ocean Okay, that water's just come straight in front of us. sketchy section and just had a bit of a team debrief. debrief about the whole experience and how we all found it and everything and yeah kind of letting the stressed emotions just chill out a little bit that was intense mm, that was i don't think we realized quite how intense it was going to be emotions are heightened when you're in a vehicle that is more heavy and also so precious and invaluable really like we have everything in this car and this is our house and it needs to get us back home again so yeah that's something to consider if you guys are thinking about doing this is maybe rent a vehicle or go with a guide or something because you then don't have the worry of ruining your car or getting your car stuck or getting your car washed away to sea mm. so it was still fun it was good fun but yeah probably one of the sketchiest things i've ever done uh, we're gonna head back out to swack up i think now and just go to where we've camped the last few nights and relax this experience tested us and our landy hindsight is a wonderful thing and looking back we may have taken a slightly different approach if we were to do this drive again as we've said before this vehicle is more than just a car to us. It's our home, it allows us to travel the world, and to lose our car to the ocean would end our trip and change our life. That being said, we do not regret taking on this drive. Being forced out of your comfort zone is the way we grow and learn. Sure, if we had lost our landy, our opinion may be slightly different, but all in all, we have no regrets. And looking back, it was a good experience overall. So guys, the four of us live to tell the tale. We made it through Sandwich Harbour going out. We then decided to turn around and come back in, which is when you saw that Tango got stuck. Um, we got everyone out, made it all the way back to the start. Yeah, it was tense. I was pretty shaky. Um, we nearly lost the car once or twice. I just had to drop into I think a second um, foot flat just trying to get back onto the track yeah I'd love to know what my heart rate monitor would have gone up to when I was doing that so now we've had an air compressor fitted it's made a lot of use of the uh, rough parts seat box locker so we've had the air compressor 
fitted in the seat box and then I've got my switch here and an Anderson so everything's nice and easy to get to when I'm done I just roll this up there you go We want to thank you guys for continuing to watch our videos and supporting us. We are so close to reaching 10,000 subscribers, which we can't quite believe. If you are enjoying our videos, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and leave us a comment. Thank you again. We'll see you in the next one.